The next section we're going to look at in the SSF Ultra Random Analog is the R-Flux, the Random Flux Voltage Generator. The short description of it is, is that it's a smoothly fluctuating voltage. But that doesn't really describe all that it can do. It's actually pretty cool. Now, at its default, the R-Flux output gradually drifts up and down. It's that green trace. And this movement is actually based off of the internal clock. Let's go ahead and patch it into something so you can hear what's going on. I'm going to take this output, go through an attenuator, and take that and run it into our filter cutoff. So you can hear it rise and fall. Set up a drone. I just have the one oscillator from the Moog right now. You see as the green line goes down, the filter closes. And when the green line goes up, the filter will open up again. This green line has the potential of changing direction every time there's a rising clock pulse inside the ultra random analog. A new clock pulse says, let's head off in a new direction and keep going that way until either we hit our destination or we get a new pulse. I'll speed it up a little bit here. And make it change a little bit faster, or at least change more often. It's not going any faster. To do that, you need to take advantage of the additional voltage control inputs because there's no knobs to control R flux as part of this circuit. So in this case, I'm going to use a couple channels of my levitate as bias voltages. No inputs, just outputs. I've turned the mix switch off, so I'm not bouncing down what's happening in earlier channels. Taking an output, and initially going to R flux influence. R flux influence is how fast these changes occur. So I'll plug into that, start increasing our voltage here. And now you hear the transitions are much faster. And by the way, it has that lovely log attack exponential decay that makes a really nice envelope shape. I do like the shape of the glide in the R-flux output. We can go very fast if we want. Still smoothed out a bit. Or slower. Now the second control, R-flux probability, helps us the range of the voltages. It will basically fluctuate around the voltage coming from R-flux probability. So let's go ahead and grab another connection here that into our flux probability, and now give it something other than zero voltage. I see it's staying mostly high. I also plug it up here into something I can invert to make a negative voltage. I can make it be mostly low voltages. So low you can barely hear the filter. Well, I can run different things through that. For example, I could connect my mod wheel and have that set, whether I'm doing a mostly positive voltage or not. Or even more fun, I can run other things like LFOs and envelopes through it. So let's start out by grabbing a nice simple LFO shape, such as our sine wave. See what that looks like. Go grab our probability input. Then let's take the output of that sine wave and make that probability input into our flux. Now you see the green trace is roughly following the blue trace, which is our sine wave, but is varying from it. I'll turn down its depth a little bit so we can hear it a little bit better. That's much different than a normal repetitive sine wave or even sawtooth wave modulations. Again, I can make it very fast transitions or very gradual transitions. And then you get just minor variations from the falling ramp of that sawtooth wave. Try a triangle perhaps. We have an irregular triangle, particularly if we increase the influence a little bit here. Let it change more quickly. Influence affects it, and so does the clock rate, because remember, it changes direction every time it gets a new clock pulse. Some interesting synchronizations between your internal clock and the signal you're processing through it.
in addition to feeding an LFO through it, you can also feed an envelope through it and get random variations, particularly when you're sustaining a note. Let's patch over to our envelope output. Then let's plug in a trigger to fire this envelope. There we go. So now when we play a new note, you see that the envelope still gets through, but while I'm sustaining a note, that sustain level is varying. I pull the sustain level down a little bit. That pulls the result down, let go of a note. They both release down. And since I still have the VCA open, VCA mode turned on, you can hear variations after the note's ended. If I can go ahead and turn the drone off, leave that on, long decay, and go ahead and copy this gate to the Moog's gate as well. There we go. Trigger them together. Maybe some faster variations here. Slower clock. Or faster clock. Decide how unstable I want this to be. So the random flux is not just a smoothly fluctuating random voltage in its own right, it can impart fluctuations onto other voltages running through it. That's a rather unique capability and I think that's pretty cool.